Mastering English. Effortless communication with omission of relative pronouns. Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are delving into an exciting aspect of English language learning. We're going to demystify the art of using, and sometimes not using, relative pronouns. Specifically, we're focusing on the omission of relative pronouns in relative clauses. This may sound a bit technical right now, but don't worry. By the end of this video, you'll understand it all and be using it effortlessly in your conversations. Before we dive into omitting relative pronouns, let's do a quick refresher. Relative pronouns are words like who, whom, whose, which, and that. They connect sentences or clauses together, making our speech and writing more fluent and sophisticated. For example, consider the two sentences. I have a book. The book is on the table. Using a relative pronoun, we can connect these into one. I have a book that is on the table. Now, on to the good stuff. Sometimes, we can skip the relative pronouns in a sentence without changing its meaning or making it grammatically incorrect. The rule of thumb is, if the relative pronoun is followed by a verb, other than, be, then it is required. But if it's followed by a subject plus verb, it can often be left out. Consider these examples. 1. The woman who lives next door is a doctor. In this case, who is followed by, lives, a verb. Therefore, the pronoun cannot be omitted. 2. The woman I saw yesterday is a doctor. Here, I saw, is a subject plus verb, so the original relative pronoun, that, who, can be omitted. The best way to learn this is through practice. Let's try some examples. 1. The books that I bought are interesting. Correct. 2. The books are interesting that I bought. Incorrect. In the first example, we can omit that because it is followed by a subject plus verb. I bought. But in the second example, it's incorrect to omit that because it disrupts the sentence flow and makes it confusing. And there you have it. You now know when to omit relative pronouns in English. Remember, it's all about looking for that subject plus verb after the pronoun. It's a subtle but powerful tool to make your English sound more natural and fluent. Keep practicing, and soon you won't even have to think about it. Thanks for joining me today in this English language journey. I hope you found this video useful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Happy learning, and see you soon!